The U.S. Republican presidential hopeful Jeb Bush has called on a familiar face to boost his flagging campaign. His big brother and former president, George W. Bush, took to the stage in South Carolina. Jeb Bush finished poorly in the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary. George thinks his brother has what it takes to lead the United States. He's going to assemble a great team of people to whom he'll listen. You'll create a culture in which they can deliver, deliver not just the good news, but the bad. He'll listen carefully to their advice, and then he's got the backbone necessary to make the tough decisions on behalf of the American people. The presidency is often defined by the unexpected. There's going to be crises, and it's important to have a president who can handle them with calm resolve. Let's stay with that story for you. Jordan Lieberman is with the consulting firm Campaign Grid. He is a strategist for the Republican Party, joining us now on Skype from Washington, D.C. Jordan Lieberman, deploying Big Brother is either a good idea or a bad idea. Which do you think it is? Well, there are no good ideas or other ideas left for Jeb Bush. Uh, he has to deploy his brother. Um, without him, he will lose. Uh, the Bush name is strong in South Carolina. There's a strong military tradition. There's a strong, a strong tradition of Bush's winning uh, uh, South Carolina. Um, if he doesn't do anything, uh, Trump will go on to become the nominee. So we're saying this is actually a bad idea, not least because if you look at what uh, Hillary Clinton and also Bernie Sanders are doing, they're kind of trying to take the glory for what Obama has achieved whilst not saying or whilst trying to avoid the idea of being linked to the Obama presidency. So, I mean, surely it's the truth the world over that if you reference somebody who was in office, brother or not, you're re-establishing or you're re-highlighting the association with what's gone before, not what has still to come. Right, but, but in this case, uh, Jeb Bush will lose the nomination without doing something. And this is uh, one more attempt to try and regain some momentum. Um, he has to do this. He's running out of bullets. All of the money in the world is not going to help him win the nomination. He's picked up major endorsements, uh, raised more money than anyone. Um, he's run a, a, He's got a solid uh, policy stance. He speaks well. It's just not working. So he's got to try something else. Why is it not working? Because I remember a couple of weeks ago, about, I think it's 10 days ago now, he actually had to prompt the audience to applaud him. And he was preaching to a room full of the converted. Well, the, the Republican primary electorate is not what it used to be. Following the Tea Party revolution, those Tea Party voters have really been reabsorbed into the Republican Party. And what's left is a Republican Party that is considerably more or uh, more anti-intellectual, uh, more um, inward-facing than ever before. We have given the drivers, uh, we've, we've put um, the Tea Party activists in the driver's seat. And as a result, we are um, more isolationist than ever before. Um, we don't like immigrants. Um, and this is a Republican Party that uh, has been turned on its head from where um, George W. Bush and, perhaps, and of course, his father uh, stood. Mr. Lieberman, thank you so much for joining us here on Al Jazeera. Thank you. Plenty more still to come in the next few minutes for you, including...